those walls that we call sin and shame They were like prisons that we couldn't escape But he came and he died and he rose Those walls are rubble now Hey, come on Come on, let's lift our voices, here we go Remember those giants we call death and grave I do They were like mountains that stood in our way But he came and he died and he rose Those giants are dead now Hey, yeah, let's sing it, come on You guys sing it, this is our God Cause this is our God, this is who he is He loves us This is our God, this is what he does He saves us, what he do? He bore the cross and beat the grave Yes, let heaven and earth proclaim King Woo, you guys sound pretty good this morning Come on, let's continue to lift our voices Remember that fear Remember that fear that took our breath Come on, I've been there Faith so weak that we could barely pray But he heard every word, every whisper Oh, now those altars in the wilderness Tell the, tell the story of his faithfulness Never once did he fail and he never what he does he saves us he bore the cross and beat the grave let heaven and earth proclaim this is our god king jesus come on all those truths about who god is points to our testimony that we once were in the grave that we once were in the pit and he pulled us right out amen come on let's sing that together who pulled me out of that pit Nobody but Who pulled me out of that pit He did, he did Who paid for all of our sin Who was it? Nobody Oh, that's it, come on Who rescued me from that grave? Yes, Yahweh, Yahweh Who gets the glory and praise? Nobody but Jesus Hey! From that grave, who? Yahweh, Yahweh, who gets the glory and praise? This is you, nobody but Him. This is our God. This is who He is. He loves. This is our. He saves us. What He do? He bore the cross. Let heaven and earth proclaim. This is our. Jesus, he bore, he bore the cross and beat the grave. Let heaven and earth proclaim this is our God, King G. He bore the cross one more time. This is what he does. He bore the cross and beat the grave. Let heaven and earth proclaim this is our God, King Amen. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise this morning. He's so worthy. Amen. You may have a seat. Uh, thank you so much for being here today. And I, I agree with Pastor Luke. You guys sound amazing today, and it's great to hear each other, uh, and it's great to worship together. If we have not had a chance to interact, my name is Josh. I get to serve as one of the pastors here on staff at Heritage. And uh, I want to just update the church, kind of a family conversation around a couple of different staffing uh, updates all good news, uh, good celebration times that we're gonna have in, a, in just a few moments. And the first thing that I wanna announce is that uh, Pastor Stephanie Ward is rejoining the Heritage team. And we are super excited about that. In fact, Pastor Stephanie, would you, would you join me on platform? And uh, as she comes, yeah, we can, we can keep clapping, that's great. Absolutely. <clears throat> 
Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, Steph, you know, one of the things that um, that I'm excited about is you're you've been hired or rehired or rejoined, whatever. <laughs> I don't know yeah. the right verbiage for this. You were actually on. You've been on staff at Heritage uh, for nine years, and then we'll talk about what you've been doing. And mm -hmm. so. Uh, you're coming on team as a pastor of care and community mm -hmm. uh, or connection, I think is the right word. Yeah. But um, I'm excited about this and would love for you just to share with the body kind of what you've been up to and why this makes sense and um, just some of your thoughts. And, yeah, uh, just, I'd love to. Yeah, yeah I'd love to. You. So for the last year and a half, um, God called me into this crazy, amazing, intense season where I was in a program for a year that um, taught me how to be a chaplain. And I worked at the hospital in Peoria, and it was just fantastic, learning all these amazing things. And then for the last seven months, I was doing hospice chaplaincy. So I am super, super excited to bring all of these new skills that I learned and things that God showed me back to the church that I love so much, back to Heritage, and to just journey with all of you as we just really dig deeper and love deeper our body, our church, our church family. I'm excited. Yeah, and you know, one of the things that um, I, I love, uh, and I'll, I'll protect privacy on this and stuff, but uh, Steph, you made a phone call, your very first phone call on behalf of Heritage, a care call this week, and it was a really tragic situation, but Steph, because of her connections and experience in uh, the world of, of hospice, or not hospice, but hospital and chaplaincy and those sorts of things, um, was able to connect this family into deeper community. I was actually replaying in my head like how I would have approached that call. And I, I pray that God would have used anything that I would have said you know, to his glory and, and whatever, but you were able to engage in that phone call in a way that I would not have been um, because of your experience in the hospital. Um, and I, I love that. I, I think um, that it's, uh, it's just a beautiful thing. God is good. Uh, God, God is, is good. very good. God is faithful. <laughs> um, just for clarity, so Steph will be inheriting um, several teams. She'll be inheriting any of the teams associated with pastoral care. So hospital visitation, uh, funeral teams, uh, marriage mentors, um, I mean, I'm missing some, but then uh, the other big piece of what she'll be doing is she'll be working with our awesome usher and greeter team. So she'll be working in first impressions and, and our host teams and, and those sorts of things. And, uh, we just, we're excited to see what she is going to bring to the table in terms of, of leadership and passion and, and those sorts of things. So I'm excited. Uh, I'm glad I'm you so are. Excited. I'm excited. I'm excited for you. Yep. So excited. Thank you. <laughs> So uh, one of the natural questions would be, okay, um, Josh, we know what you have done in the past for Heritage, so what, what will you be doing now? Like, <laughs> nothing, really. Oh, no, uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> no, I've got Star Wars queued up in my cubicle. I'm just going to watch it all day tomorrow. No big deal. No, so, no, 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 my friend. No, no. So uh, the truth is, um, and it's been a really lovely process. In fact, we, we want to make it clear, this is not... This is not like a, a demotion for me. This is not a slap on the wrist. There's no shenanigans involved. Um, Pastor Brian's really beautifully worked through a process of trying to identify where, where each staff member is, is really uniquely um, impassioned and empowered to minister. And one of the things that I just know about myself is I love discipleship and I love spiritual growth and I love seeing people grow deeper in their walk with Jesus. And so in this next season for Heritage, I'm going to get to invest in those things. Uh, so uh, I think my official title is going to be like discipleship and development, something like that. Um, but I'll be really looking at uh, developing spiritual growth uh, opportunities and experiences and classes and even maybe writing some stuff. And uh, of course, continuing to preach and teach on the teaching team, um, but also even dreaming about what would it look like for Heritage to be a place of development for young uh, developing pastors. And uh, so just super excited about that work and uh, excited about what that may look like uh, in the near future. So I'm so very excited for all God has planned for you. You've done a lot of that in my life and uh, it's been amazing. So you'll you be a blessing that. to many people. Thank you for saying that. It's That's truth. So there's a... Uh, <clears throat> So there, there is a second uh, announcement that we want to make that, that I'm super excited about. We have filled our executive assistant position. Yay! Which is great. <clears throat> and we have filled it uh, with a lady named Gracie Howard. Yay! <laughs> which is awesome. 
she is, she is gracie to all of you, but there's only two people in the world, me being one of them, that can call her mom. And uh, <laughs> yes, this is my mom. In fact, she's here, and I'm going to have her stand. She's going to hate me for it. Yes. But here yes. she is over here. Yay. <laughs> we are so happy. And uh, we're, we're actually, you know, for those of you who don't know my mom's journey, like she has served at Heritage for uh, 27 years uh, as different, different types of uh, administrative assistant roles, but mostly executive assistant. And she is just uniquely gifted and qualified. Um, she's gonna be a blessing to Pastor Brian. Like we were, we, I was thinking about this. Pastor Brian's been here for two months without any assistant. Um, uh, so like for, for, I don't know, it's just gonna be great for him, but you know, it's almost like, I said this at Bettendorf, he's kind of superhuman in some ways, <laughs> um, but then to have, to have Gracie kind of jump in and help, it's, they're gonna make a great team. So we're excited about that. We wanna make sure the church knows that are. that's are happening the best, as well. Gracie. <laughs> and I know my mom, she, she hates the public stuff, so <laughs> I probably won't get her homemade tacos for a while, and that's fine, that's, that's all right, that's all right. So um, we're excited, church, uh, about a number of things that are happening. Uh, one other thing I wanna mention, this is just more of a regular uh, kind of rhythm kind of thing, but please fill out your connection card if you get a chance today, particularly if you have prayer requests. This is something, you know, stuff you're gonna be jumping into a little bit more. Um, but we wanna know what's going on in your life. We want to offer care. We wanna raise the temperature of care at Heritage. And so please take a moment to fill that out. Drop it in the offering bucket uh, when it comes by at the end of service. And for now, I'm just gonna ask, would you stand with me again? And let's just continue to lift our voice and worship the Lord this morning as a community of believers. Oh 
But don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. You've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, my soul. Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. Cause you've got inside of those lungs. Get up and up your song. Come on. you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, one more time. Come on, my soul. Don't you get shy on me. Cause you've got a lion inside. All right, how are we doing, Heritage Church? It is so, so good to see you this morning. Hey, very quickly, um, wow, what a touching moment of worship to hear your voices like that this morning. But would you just thank Pastor Luke uh, for who he is and leading us in such a beautiful, beautiful time of worship? It was awesome. Um, hey, I also want to say, it looks like you have just a little bit more room around you this week, uh, and I think that's a good thing. We, we launched our Saturday night service last night. Uh, I'm so excited about that. We'll talk more about that at the end of the service. I just want to celebrate here with Rock Island. It was awesome to start that service. I don't know all the numbers yet. We're kind of, uh, haven't actually seen the count. We think it's around 250 to 300 who were here just for our Saturday night. So, uh, hey, I hope that's nice for those of you who attend here. A little bit more a room uh, parking wasn't as bad uh, as well, and so um, that's awesome. And if you ever uh, need or would like to join us on that Saturday night service, we would love to have you. Hey, friends! Uh, today I am starting a brand new series called Overcomer. Now, over the next several weeks, I really want to help each of you better understand why we go through challenging and tough seasons of life, and then I also want to help you understand how then we navigate 
through the tough and challenging seasons. And then ultimately with this series, we want to teach you what the Bible tells us about how we overcome the different challenging seasons of life. But now for today, I really want to start sort of at the, at the very beginning of this conversation. I want to talk about why we as Christians, why do we even have to go through the challenging seasons in the first place? I think really I'm looking at this message today as sort of the introduction to this entire series. So look, truth be told, I think every person in this room at one point or another, we have all gone through a challenging season of life. Would anyone agree with that this morning? You've been through a challenging season. If you didn't raise your hand, you're lying. You're not supposed to do that in church. Repent. All right. Now, maybe let's just talk a little bit about this. Maybe recently, uh, I, you know, I don't know what your story is. I don't know what your storm is. Maybe recently you were diagnosed with cancer or maybe a loved one passed away and you are still in that, that season of raw emotion of, of loss and grief. Maybe you're here this morning and you have just really been struggling with a deep sense of loneliness or, or you know, maybe the, the person or the people who have always surrounded you or supported you for whatever reason, they're no longer in your life and, and you just have this deep sense of loneliness. You find yourself with no one to talk to or no one is encouraging you. Maybe you are here this morning and you are in a season of failure Maybe, maybe nothing seems to be going right in your life and, and you really can't remember the last time you had a win. It's just like one thing after another just keeps pushing you backwards and maybe you're here wondering if it's just time to give up on life or God or others. If you find yourself in one of those challenging seasons of life, I want you to know that help is on the way. God hears your cries for help. He sees the tears in your eyes. He feels the pain in your heart. And he knows, maybe better than you, that something needs to change. And so maybe you're here and you're asking yourself the question, why, God? Well, why, why am I going through this challenging season? Why are these things happening in my life? God, why do I feel like you haven't intervened? Why do I still feel lonely? Why do I feel plagued with, with such a sense of sorrow and grief? Why am I doubting my own ability and confidence? Why do I feel like I'm a failure at everything I do? This morning, I want to bring some understanding to those of you who might be right now in the middle of the storm. And I also want to help you biblically learn how to navigate through these challenging seasons. Let's first spend some time understanding the seasons of life. That's really my hope today. I want to just help you understand as a Christian, why do we even have to go through these challenging seasons? I believe biblically, if we take the whole narrative of the Bible we learn about five incredibly important facts of life as it relates to going through challenging seasons. I want to share those with you today. If you have your sermon notes, I hope that you'll write these down. Let's look at the very first thing we learned biblically. The challenging seasons of life are often beyond my control. Here's the truth of the matter. You can't necessarily always control when tough seasons come into your life. You, you can't always control how long they happen. You can't always control when they happen. Maybe, let's, let's start here. Maybe you had a particular plan for this season of your life. Maybe you thought in this season of life that you were going to, I, I don't know, some examples. You were going to be making more money at a better paying job, but for whatever reason, you are still in a season uh, where you're stuck in the same job. Or maybe in this season, you thought you would be enjoying retirement and traveling the world. Maybe for this particular season, you thought that you would just be filled with confidence in everything you were doing. Maybe you thought you would be achieving your dreams and your goals. And maybe you thought that the blessings of God would just be abundant in your life. But maybe for some unknown reason, and possibly for reasons out of your control, it's just not your current reality. Maybe that dream job never opened up and you're still stuck in the same job and you just can't stand to wake up in the morning 
Because you get no joy in that job. Maybe retirement and traveling the world never happened because maybe your spouse unexpectedly passed away and now you find yourself working two jobs just to make ends meet. Maybe your confidence was shattered by someone in your life or your dreams or your goals were overtaken now by a lack of determination and courage. Dear friends, please listen. One of the reasons we go through these challenging and tough seasons is because sometimes, I'm not saying all the time, sometimes though, these challenging seasons are beyond our control. I wanna just make a quick disclaimer though. Do we often go through challenging seasons of life because of the bad choices we are making? Absolutely. There are always consequences to our bad choices. But really this morning, I want you to understand that also there's another part of this. Sometimes these challenging seasons come into our lives and it doesn't actually have much to do with us. Sometimes challenging seasons of life are just beyond our control. And I think it would do us good to remember that even though we might want to be in control of every aspect and every season of our life, it might be good to remember that ultimately God is the one in control of all things. Daniel 2.21, God controls the times and the seasons. He makes and unmakes kings. It is he who gives wisdom and understanding. Friends, when you are going through a challenging season, I think it's first good to remember that you're not always in control of every season and everything that's happening in your life, but God is in control, and he's the one you should seek when you find yourself in that tough and challenging season. There's a second point. Write this down. The challenging seasons of life are often confusing. When the diagnosis isn't what you wanted to hear, when a loved one suddenly dies, when you fail at something that you have been working so hard to achieve, or, or when things don't happen in the time frame you want them to happen, I think we all find ourselves where we're just like, we're really confused, and, and maybe some of us, we might begin to question God, or we begin to doubt God, or we even doubt ourselves. In tough seasons of life, I think sometimes we, we find ourselves saying things like, why is this happening to me? God, I don't understand why, why you are making me go through this storm or this season. Look, I, I don't know if um, this has been true in your life, um, but it has definitely been true in mine. Have you noticed that when we are actually going through a difficult season, when we're in the middle of the storm, it's often confusing and we, we don't understand what's going on. But have you noticed this? Strangely, once we get through the season, once we get through the storm, once we've actually persevered, once we've made it out of the storm victoriously, that's often when we begin to understand why God allowed us to go through the storm in the first place. When we are in the middle of the storm, we're often confused. We don't understand why a good and loving father would allow for this really challenging season to happen. But I believe once we've made it through the storm, that's when we are able to see what God was teaching us. And now that we have a better perspective of what we went through, we understand that God was actually working in that moment. But I want to say this. Will we always understand every tough and challenging situation we go through? No, I don't think we will. Are we always going to have this aha moment where we can say, oh, okay, now I get it. No, I, I don't think every situation that life presents, we will always have that moment. We may not understand every challenging season while we're living here on earth, but I do believe I can promise you this, you will understand it one day when you are standing face to face with your creator. This is why the Bible teaches us to live by faith. Look at Ecclesiastes 3.11. Yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. But even so, look at this, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. In the tough seasons of life, as Christians, friends, we must live by faith, not by explanation. 
If we could could understand why God does everything he does and why God allows for certain things to happen, we would be God, but we are not. I feel like it's almost like an ant trying to understand what a human being is. Look, our, our brain's capacity, I don't believe, is big enough to understand why God does all the things that he does. And I think what Holy Spirit wants to say right now is that we need to be at peace with that reality. So it's okay to be in the middle of a challenging season and be confused by that season. Number three, the challenging seasons of life have a purpose. The lonely seasons, the sad seasons, the seasons of success, the seasons of waiting, the seasons of grief, and on and on, every season that you and I go through, I'm telling you, it still has a meaning and a purpose. Look at Romans 8, 28. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God, look at this, and are called according to his purpose for them. Look at it again. We know that God causes everything. Would that include the bad seasons? It would include the bad seasons. Let me help you understand the verse a little bit better. And this might be hard to hear. If you are a believer, nothing comes into your life that hasn't been filtered by your heavenly father. I didn't say it was brought into your life by God. I said nothing has come into your life that hasn't been filtered by your heavenly father. Your life is not a random series of freak accidents or occurrences or circumstances that just randomly happen. It's not necessarily an accident. God never does anything by accident. He has appointed a time for everything in your life. Now you might be asking, well, Even the bad things, Pastor Brian, God's appointed those. Well, let me say this. Um, Yes and no. Now, I don't want you to misunderstand me. Let's, Let's understand this. God does not have to plan all the problems in your life. He doesn't need to. You come up with those problems all by yourself. And so do I. God doesn't have to plan bad times in your life. They happen maybe because of bad decisions you make. They may happen because of bad decisions other people make. And sadly, you were just a victim or an innocent bystander. Dear friends, God doesn't plan for bad things to happen to you. If you agree with this next statement, say amen. God is not the author of evil. He does not plan bad things to happen in your life. But here's the beauty of Romans 8, 28. He does have a purpose where he can then draw good out of each and every good or bad situation that you go through in life. That means then that every single event, no matter how dark it is, no matter how shameful, no matter how bad, no matter how guilty, no matter how bitter you are feeling about something, dear friends, Holy Spirit is saying to all of us, including me, that God can still bring good out of it and he can still work all things together for good. So friends, when you are going through a tough season of life, please remember that those challenging seasons are sometimes beyond your control. They are often very confusing and it's okay to be in a tough season and you're confused by it. But maybe God wants to bring some hope and also say in that challenging season though, God's gonna have a purpose for it and he's gonna work some amazing things for good through it. There's a fourth one. Write this down. The challenging seasons of life include both good and bad times. I want you to think about this statement for a moment. Life is full of different seasons. Just think about that for a moment. Life is full of different seasons. We walk up mountains. We go through valleys. We go through great successes. We have epic failures. (laughs) Has anyone ever had an epic failure? I just want to raise your hand. I I just, I'm glad to know I'm in good company. I'm going to raise two hands. I've had many epic failures. If I had a third hand, I'd raise it. We have seasons of winnings. We have seasons of losses. In Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8, 
The author gives to us 28 different life experiences or seasons. And I want you to know this, this verse, it's not an exhaustive list. It's just a representation. It's, it's meant to say, we're going to go through some crazy seasons in life. And I think that this verse is a beautiful reminder that in our life, there are so many different seasons. Most of you know this verse. Some of you know it by heart. Could we just meditate on it briefly? Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8. For everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to turn away. A time to search and a time to quit searching. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be quiet and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Life is a combination of many different seasons. And can I say this? I just feel like Holy Spirit really wants me to say this. Life cannot always be sunshine. Sunshine and no rain, do you know what that makes? It makes a desert. And a desert is a cracked and bruised place, and it is often devoid of life. If everything was always perfect in your life, and if the sun was always shining, I think that you and I, we would actually be rather shallow people. Because, dear friends, it's in the season of rain, it's in the season of storm, where we actually have to hunker down and we have to learn how to survive. That's when, in the storm, that's the moment we learn more about ourselves. It's in the tough seasons of life when we begin to draw closer to Jesus because we realize in the storm that the only way we're going to, re- to, su- to survive is to rely on his protection and his power and his grace. Dear friends, without the rain, without the storm, we are simply dried up, unhealthy, cracked and bruised, much like a desert. But it's when we go through the seasons of storm followed by seasons of sunshine, dear friends, that's when we begin to blossom and bloom and that's when we we actually begin to grow. That's when we see how God was moving in the storm. That's when we're able to see how God was breathing life into us, even in the middle of the storm. And that's when we realize who we are and all that God created us to be. In every season of life, we are going to experience both the good and the bad. I think some of you are going through a season right now that might not look very beautiful. Maybe you'd say, Pastor Bryant looks pretty ugly right now, the season I'm in. And I don't know what that is for you. Maybe it's your finances. Maybe it's your health. Maybe there's a relationship. It just looks really ugly right now. Maybe you can't see your future. It just looks like it's really ugly. But dear friends, Holy Spirit needs me to say to you this morning, hold on, because the help and hope of God is still going to bring good out of it, and he can still make the sun to shine in your life so that you will blossom and grow once that storm comes to pass. When you are going through a really bad season, you have to remember that challenging seasons are sometimes beyond your control. Those seasons are often confusing. The challenging seasons still have a point and a purpose. The challenging seasons include both good and bad times. And then number five, write this down. The challenging seasons of life include both sowing and reaping. Every farmer knows this principle. You plant in the spring and you harvest in the fall. You don't, you don't plant in the spring and then two days later expect for the harvest to be ready. Why? Well, because it would be too soon. The, the, the crop isn't strong enough. It hasn't had time to develop. It, it hasn't had time to, to grow and, and to fully mature. You see, the only way for the crop to develop and grow is for that crop to actually itself go through some different seasons so then it can be ready for the harvest. And I think the same principle applies to us. When you find yourself in a really challenging season, friends, you might need to let go of some things 
You, you might need to take some of those things that, that you have been holding on to for so many years and you might need to plant them in the ground so that they can mature, so they can de- develop, and so that they can grow stronger So once the, se- the tough season is over. And hopefully, once that tough, se- tough season is over, they will be ready for reaping. Friends, if you find yourself in a tough season, maybe what God is saying is you need to release that control over your life that you've been holding on to And maybe God is saying, hey, I'm going to allow this tough season into your life because I need you to plant that control into the ground. Or maybe God is saying, I'm going to allow this tough season to come because I need for you to plant your anger or your doubt or your failure or your grief. I need you to plant those things in the ground during this really bad season of life. And then once this season comes to an end and a new season begins to approach, maybe those things that you planted will begin to mature and to develop so that that when they do bloom, maybe your need for control will turn into a full-on surrender to God's will. Or maybe your anger will blossom into a deep, deep love for God and others. Or maybe that doubt that you've been holding on to for so many years will blossom into a beautiful faith. Or maybe your failure will blossom into now you're understanding how to learn from your mistakes or maybe that grief will blossom into a joy for what God is doing and what he will continue to do in your life Galatians 6 9 let's not get tired of doing what is good look at this at just the right time we will reap a harvest of blessing what does it say if we don't give up Wow. Going through a tough and challenging season, this is a part of life. Have you ever thought about this from a biblical perspective? Every hero of the faith, Moses, Abraham, Joseph, King David, Mary, the mother of Jesus, Jesus Christ himself, the apostle Paul, all of the disciples of Christ, they all went through some rather horrific seasons of life. Why? Because tough, tough seasons, bad seasons, they are a part of life and no one is exempt from them. And since tough seasons are a part of life, I think as Christians, it would do us so good to understand why the seasons are happening. Friends, we must understand that these seasons can be beyond our control. The seasons can be confusing. There is still a purpose and and a point behind them. Those seasons can include both good and bad times. And challenging seasons of life can often include both sowing and reaping. Now that I think we may have a better understanding of why these challenging seasons come into our life, I wanna conclude very briefly with two questions you should always ask yourself when you are in the middle of the storm. When you are in that bad season, two questions you should always ask yourself. Question number one, what can I learn in this challenging season of life? Look, friends, no matter what life presents to you, no matter the challenge or the trial, no matter the heartache or the pain, no matter the temptation or sin or struggle, no matter the hardship or the loss, I believe there is always something that God is teaching you and there is always something that you can learn from the situation you are in. Listen, instead of dwelling on an unfortunate circumstance or instead of feeling sorry for yourself that things just are going so bad in my life right now, I believe the Holy Spirit is trying to say, what if you were to replace those negative thoughts and begin to look for opportunities that you can learn and you can see what God is actually trying to teach you? Instead of laboring over your loneliness, maybe God is trying to teach you how to be content with finding fullness and happiness in him alone. Instead of brooding over maybe something you have lost, maybe God is trying to teach you how to move away from your past so you can look forward to a brilliant and bright future that he has planned. Look at Philippians 3.13. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. What are we talking about here? This is a failure, right? He's saying he, he has this sense of failure. He says, I have not achieved it. But look at what he says. But I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past, meaning forgetting the past failures, and looking forward to what lies ahead. Can I get an amen for that? That is so powerful. 
Instead of giving in to the lies that you are not good or you're never going to accomplish anything or you're never going to fulfill your dreams, maybe God is just trying to teach you how to find confidence and strength even when everything in your life is upside down. And instead of giving up and giving in to temptation and sin and addiction, maybe God is trying to teach you, dear friends, how to be a fighter how to be an overcomer. Maybe God is in the middle of writing your testimony so that you can actually be a living, breathing example of the very power and strength and grace of, and mercy of God. And instead of getting mad at yourself or blaming yourself or blaming God for the tough season you're in, maybe God just wants to teach you to rely on him and him alone. If it's a good season or a bad season. 2 Corinthians 1.9. In fact, we expected to die. Well, that seems like a pretty bad day. In fact, we expected to die. That seems like a really bad season or storm. But look at what it says. As a result, we stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely only on God who raises the dead. When you are in a challenging season or storm, dear friends, I don't know about you, but I'm putting all of my hope and all of my faith on God because he's the God who can raise people from the dead. One of the most important questions to ask yourself in seasons of trial and storm is what can I learn? And then number two, what can I enjoy in this challenging season of life? Friends, there is a truth we need to learn. No matter what season of life you find yourself in, no matter if it's a good season where everything is going right or a bad season of life where everything is going wrong, no matter the season of life you find yourself in, I'm telling you, there is always something that you can find joy in. There is always something that can bring you happiness. And how do I know this? Because here it is. No matter what trial or storm you find yourself in, there is always the joy that you will have of being saved by God grace through faith. You will always have the joy of knowing that no matter what's happening in this life, you can be victorious in the life to come. No matter what's happening in your life, your salvation can never be taken away from you. No matter the failure, the loss, the self-doubt, no matter the impatience, no matter the loneliness, no matter the sin or temptation you are fighting through, you can always find something to enjoy and be joyful for because, dear friends, always you can be thankful and joyful for your salvation because you are forever a child of God and you will forever spend eternity in the presence of your maker. And that should bring a deep joy no matter the season. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 Be thankful in all circumstances. Would all circumstances include bad seasons? It would. For this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Dear friends, when the tough and challenging seasons of life come our way, I hope that you will always remember that sometimes those seasons are beyond our control. They can be very confusing. They still have a point and a purpose. They include both good and bad times, and they also include both sowing and reaping. And I close with this. The only way for us to remain victorious when the devil comes knocking and the storm starts brewing is for us to focus less on the pain and frustration of that season and to focus more on what God wants to teach us and the joy he wants to bring us. Let's pray. God, you are so good. You are so good. You are good even in the storm. <laughs> you are good in the successes. You are good in the failures. God, I thank you for allowing us to hear your voice through this message. Thank you for reminding us that we are a people who can overcome because we have a Savior who has overcome. Father, I pray that these truths have been foundational for us this morning. And I pray that they have been helpful for those who are currently in the middle of the storm. Would you give courage to everyone in this room who's fighting a tough season right now? 
And would you allow them to stop associating the blame of that season either on you or themselves or others? But ultimately, would you allow them to see what you might be teaching them? And also, would you help them see the joy that you still give to them, even in that season? Jesus, give us courage and strength so we can be overcomers. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. that Pastor Brian shared there at the end that just said, I'm not relying on myself, but the God who raises from the dead. I think that's our invitation today. If you're in a battle, it's just to say, God, I'm turning my trust to you. <laughs> from here on out, I'm turning my trust to you, putting my faith in you and you alone. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna believe these words that I'm singing, that I'm fighting a battle, but you've already won. You've already overcome. So would you stand with me? Let's just sing that chorus again. Let these words ring true from your heart to God. And I'm fighting a battle. You've already won. No matter what comes my way, I will overcome. Don't know what you're doing, but I know. You guys know this one. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is the mountain, you see a mountain boo. When as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me There's nothing to fear now For I am safe Come on, I know you know this one Would you sing it out with all that you have? So when I fight So when I fight I'll fight on my knees With my hands lifted high Oh God the battle belongs to you, and every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing, I'll sing through the night, oh God, the battle belongs to you. And if you are for me, who can be against me? No one. No one, nothing. For Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you. Oh, when all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. When all I see is the cross, God, you see. Every fear I 
lay at your feet. I sing through the night, oh God, the battle belongs to you. Here's who he is. In almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadow, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power. Come on, sing it. In almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our You shine in the shadow, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the, come on, one more time. In almighty fortress, you go before. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of belongs to you and oh God the battle belongs to you so when I fight I'll fight on my knees you sing it with my The battle belongs to you. It was so great to have you worship with us today. It's it's amazing to be able to just lean into prayer and and study of the word and, and sing together. It is so great when the body of Christ comes together. So regardless of where you're watching from, we are so glad that you were here. If you wanna find some different ways to connect into the life at Heritage, go to our website, heritageqc.com. You can find ways to plug into community or or an upcoming event maybe that's coming, uh, or or you can give financially there as well. Uh, If you wanna talk to a pastor, you can also request just something around that. Like just just reach out and let us know what you need, how we can be praying for you, how we can talk with you. We would love to come alongside wherever you are in your journey and offer support. Uh, We are so glad that you're here. And so I just pray that the, the love of God the Father, the grace of the Son, and the blessing and fellowship of Holy Spirit rest and abide on you now and forever. Amen.